What up, nerds? My name is Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got a perfect score on the SAT and a perfect score on the ACT. And today, I'm gonna show you how to solve circle equation questions on both tests. So circle equation questions show up a lot on both the SAT and the ACT. And the first step to solving a circle equation is being familiar with the standard form of a circle equation. So what is the standard form of a circle equation? Here we have it. It is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. And the cool thing about this form is that when you have a circle equation in this form, you can just look at it and tell what its center is. Its center is hk and its radius as well. Its radius is r. So when you have a circle equation in that form, it's easy to see what its center is, it's easy to see what its radius is. And a lot of times in a question like this, all they're really asking you to do is take the equation of a circle that is not in the standard form and put it in the standard form. So as you can see, the equation they've given us here is not in the standard form. It doesn't have an x binomial that is quantity squared and a y binomial that is quantity squared. So how do we get this equation that's not in the standard form into the standard form? We're gonna use the process called completing the square. And we're gonna actually complete the square twice. So sometimes when we're working with parabolas or quadratics, we've gotta complete the square once to put the equation in what we call the vertex form. On a circle equation question, we often have to complete the square twice. We have to do it once for the x's and once for the y's. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of completing the square here. Just keep in mind as we go that we're actually executing the entire process twice simultaneously, once for the x's and once for the y's. All right, so let's do it. The first step in completing the square is going to be writing out the equation they gave us. All right, x squared minus six x plus y squared plus 12y minus nine equals zero. All right, now, once I've written out the equation they gave us, I want to separate my x variables from everything else. I wanna put them inside some parentheses, like this. I'm gonna take x squared minus six x. And not only that, I'm actually going to add in a blank. I'm gonna add in a blank inside the parentheses. And later on, we're gonna fill in that blank, but we're not quite ready to do that yet. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing for the y's. I'm gonna group the y's inside some parentheses and add a blank for the y's as well. And what about that nine? Well, I don't want the nine on the left side, so I'm gonna add nine to each side and I get nine on the right. Now, how do I get away with adding blanks on the left side of the equation? How can I just change the equation like that? Well, the way I get away with it is by adding the same blanks on the right side of the equation as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and denote that. We have two blanks on the right as well. And as soon as I figure out what goes in the blanks on the left, I'm gonna fill the same number into the blanks on the right so that I make sure not to make any careless errors. All right, now, what goes in the blanks? Well, our job here is to turn this x quadratic into a quadratic that can be factored into a binomial quantity squared. And for any binomial quantity squared, it's C term, and that's a reference to the standard form of a quadratic, AX squared plus BX plus C. If a quadratic can be factored into a binomial quantity squared, it must be the case that its C term is equal to its B term over two quantity squared. So, how do I know what to put in the blank? I just take the B term from my x's, put it over two, and quantity square it. So what is my B term for the x's? It looks like it's negative six, simple enough. So I take that negative six, I'm gonna put it over two, and quantity square it. And we'll simplify that in just a minute. Let's do the same thing for the y's. I'm gonna take my B term. For the y's, it is 12. So 12 over two, and quantity square it. Awesome, so now simplifying inside the x parentheses, I've got x squared minus six x plus negative six over two is negative three. So negative six over two quantity squared becomes negative three quantity squared. Negative three quantity squared is just positive nine. All right, now I have filled in the blank for the x's on the left, so as soon as I figure that out, I wanna fill the same number in on the right. All right, so on the right side of my equation, 
I know that the first blank is going to have a 9 in it. I'm going to do the same thing for the y's as soon as I figure out what goes in that blank. So for the y's, let's simplify. y squared plus 12y. 12 over 2 is 6. And when I quantity square 6, I get 36. So the c term for the y's is 36. So this second blank contains 36. Awesome. And now I'm ready to factor. I've manipulated the two quadratics on the left to the point that I can factor them. I can factor each of them into a binomial quantity squared. So I know after my next step, it's going to look like this. In fact, I can go ahead and simplify the right side as well. 9 plus 9 is 18 plus 36 is 54. So my right side's finished. All that remains to be done is to factor the quadratics on the left side. Now, how do I factor them? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. I can remember that the second term in this binomial quantity squared is going to be equal to the b term over 2 before I squared it. So if you recall, the b term over 2 before I squared it was negative 6 over 2, or negative 3. So I can remember that it's going to be x minus 3. I could always factor it like that. Or, if you're not confident that you'll remember that, you can just remember the way that you factor any quadratic, which is to look for two factors of the c term that add up to the b term. What are two factors of positive 9 that add up to negative 6? They are negative 3 and negative 3. So that means the x minus 3 quantity squared is my binomial quantity squared in the next step. We're going to do the same thing for y. I can say y, and then what are two factors of 36 that add up to 12? 6 and 6, right? So y plus 6. Or I could just remember that the second term in my y binomial is the b term over 2 before I squared it. In this case, 12 over 2 or 6. So folks, I have now put my circle equation into the standard form. And again, the reason we do that is that now that the circle equation is in the standard form, I can tell what its center is just by looking at it. So what is its center? Well, you might be tempted to say its center is negative 3, positive 6, because negative 3 is the second term in my x's, and positive 6 is the second term in my y's. But actually, look more carefully at the standard form of the circle equation up here, and see that the x-coordinate of the center, which we call h, is actually the number that is subtracted from x when an equation is in the standard form. And the y-coordinate of the center, the number we call k, is the number that is subtracted from y when the circle is in the standard form. In other words, when you have a circle equation in the standard form, make sure you flip the signs of the h and k terms to find the center. So instead of a center of negative 3, positive 6, I actually have a center of 3, negative 6. And that means b is my answer. And that's all I've got for you about how to solve circle equation questions on both the SAT and the ACT. Make sure to throw us a like if you found this video helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Experts YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video and let us know what you'd like us to cover in our next video. What do you want advice on from a two-time perfect scorer? There's also a coupon code in the description below this video that you can use to get discounts on all of our products on our website, prepexpert.com. You can use that coupon on to sign up for a course with myself or another instructor or to sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.